This is the math review for physics, and I want to continue talking about how to solve equations. And this time, we're going to look at equations that are a little bit trickier to solve. Not that much trickier, but just a little bit trickier, like this one. P equals I squared R, and I want to solve it for I. Now, the I is squared. That's the tricky part here, but again, not that tricky. First, we want to get I squared by itself, and then after we have it by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. That's the, the what we're going to, our battle plan here, what we're going to try and do. Okay, so to get the I squared by itself, I want to divide both sides by R. So P divided by R equals I squared R divided by R. Cancel the R's. Okay, so then I get I squared equals P over R. I'm going to write the I squared on this side. I squared equals P divided by R. And then to get the i by itself, to reverse a square, I want a square root. So I'm going to square root both sides. So the square root of i squared is just i. I'm not going to write it, but you could if you wanted to. And the square root of p over r, well, it's just the square root of p over r. You can't really simplify that at all. But there's our answer. We have i in terms of p and r. Okay, so let's try another one. So this one we saw in an earlier video. This is f equals g m1 m2 divided by r squared. Last time we solved for m1, this time I want to solve it for r. Now the r is squared, just like the i was in the last equation, and it's also in the denominator. Well, I want to get it out of the denominator first, so I'm going to multiply both sides by r squared. So I get r squared times f equals g m1 m2 divided by r squared times r squared. And the r squareds cancel. So I get r squared f equals g m1 m2. Okay, now just like before, I wanted to get the i by itself. Now I want to get the r squared by itself. So I'm going to divide out that f. So divide this side by f and divide this side by f, and I get r squared equals, after I cancel the f's here, g m1 m2 divided by f. And last step, I want to reverse that square. The way to reverse the square is to square root. So I'm going to square root both sides. The square root of r squared is just r. And this all gets put under a giant square root g m1 m2 divided by f. Okay, so let's look at one more equation. This one you'll probably see in physics. This says 1 over c and then that says eq, that's equivalent. You don't really need to know what this means right now, just know that I want to solve this equation for c equivalent. And 1 over c equivalent equals 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2. Now this looks pretty easy. You just think, okay, well c equivalent is almost already by itself. But the problem is that it's 1 over c equivalent. And I want c equivalent. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually combine the 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2. Now these are fractions. And the way you add fractions is by giving them a common denominator. So 1 over c equivalent equals, and my common denominator is going to be c1 times c2. So c1 times c2 plus c1 times c2. Now the first fraction, 1 over c1, in order to make it have a denominator of c1, c2, I need to multiply the top by c2. You can imagine canceling out the c2s and you'd be left with 1 over c1. And then similarly over here, my numerator is going to be c1. You can imagine canceling out the c1s and you'd be left with 1 over c2, which is what I started with. So I didn't really change anything yet. But now I can add them because they have the same denominator. So 1 over c equivalent equals c2 plus c1 divided by the common denominator of c1, c2. Okay, now that I have one fraction equal to another fraction, a little trick that I can use is to just flip both fractions. You can always do this if you have one fraction equal to another fraction. I couldn't do it here because I had one fraction equal to two other fractions added together. So the trick doesn't work right in the beginning, but now that I just have one fraction 
equal to another fraction. I'm just going to flip both sides. So I get C equivalent equals C1, C2 is now on top. And then the bottom, I'll just rewrite them in order, C1 plus C2. And that's my final answer.